Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk News. I'm Luke Cohen and this is Wrestling News. Before we get into our top story, I would just like to thank everyone who's shared this video of me and my wife doing our usual training routine. It's it, it's so nice to see so many of you appreciate the the hard work that I put into my physique and and you know it's nice to get the messages about how insanely strong that me and my wife are. What do you mean no one's gonna buy that? Of course they are. Look, I know you can tell that. I know you can tell it's Julius Creed and Ivy Nile. I know that you and I know that. But they might not be able to see it. They're watching this on their phones in the toilet. The video will be tiny. Why get away with it? You don't know. In all seriousness, that is an incredible feat of strength. Uh, and kudos to Ivy Nile and Julius Creed. And kudos to WWE, who are taking an absolute war to AEW next week. When AEW launched in 2019, WWE went into overdrive to try and shut down their momentum quickly, and not a lot of it worked. Especially their big plan of moving NXT off the WWE Network and onto USA Network to run directly against AEW Dynamite. AEW won the Wednesday Night War, and NXT moved to Tuesday nights, where it's remained ever since. But things are a bit different in 2023 than they were in 2021. WWE is an incredibly hot product at the moment. Their pay-per-views are doing great numbers on Peacock, their ratings are much stronger, and perhaps more importantly, their attendance is way up. WWE are regularly sending out press releases that promote their attendance records for various areas and how they're breaking viewing figures on Peacock for their pay-per-views. To paraphrase Mugatu, that WWE is so hot right now. AEW, on the other hand, isn't. While their ratings are holding steady, attendance is not where it was a year ago. Buy rates for pay-per-views are also slightly down. All In did great numbers, but All Out and Revolution were down year on year, and Wrestle Dream got about the same as All Out, which is around about 100,000 buys. They're still profitable as a business, recently signing a new billion dollar deal with Warner Brothers, but to badly paraphrase Mugatu, that AEW ain't hot right now, which is going to make next Tuesday night an exciting one for both companies and, more importantly, us wrestling fans. Because next week, Dynamite is airing on Tuesday, going head-to-head -head with NXT due to the MLB playoffs, and WWE have come out swinging. Last night on NXT, WWE announced for next week's show, Asuka will be on the show to take on Roxanne Perez. Paul Heyman will be in the corner for Bron Breaker for his match with Carmelo Hayes. Cody Rhodes will be on the show to make a major announcement. And if that wasn't enough, John friggin Cena will be on the show in the corner of Carmelo Hayes in that Breaker match. But sure, WWE don't consider AEW competition. Sure, Jan. Couple all of that with Dominic Mysterio recapturing the North American Championship, which means Judgment Day will likely be on the show, and Becky Lynch is still the NXT Women's Champion. WWE are stacking next week's NXT to go against Dynamite, which currently only has advertised the in-ring debut of Adam Copeland, the former Edge in WWE. Lads, I think NXT might beat Dynamite next week in the ratings. Honestly, I don't even think that's a question. To be honest, they probably didn't need to stack it as much as they did. This past Saturday's collision drew just 327,000 viewers, killed by going head-to-head -head with NXT's No Mercy. That WWE is so hot right now. But there is, of course, another reason behind WWE stacking NXT. Sean Ross Sapp noted on the Raw post show on Fightful that WWE are loading up NXT because they're in TV rights negotiation season. NXT has done a great job of rebuilding itself after the disaster of the Wednesday Night War and the even more disastrous 2.0 rebrand. And following on from the excellent No Mercy this past weekend, there is a sense in the air that the black and gold brand is getting back to its black and gold best. That's been reflected in the ratings, held by the integration of main roster talent and featuring NXT talent on main roster shows. And WWE will be able to use this in their negotiations with either USA Network or a potential new suitor when it comes to getting bigger rights fees. They can literally point at AEW and say, look, NXT is getting more or less the same ratings as that show and they just got a billion dollars from Warner Brothers. WWE just got a new deal with USA Network for SmackDown, which is bigger than the record-breaking one they got with Fox, so they'll be expecting the same for Raw and NXT. It is simply 
smart business and we're the ones who benefit because you can bet your bottom dollar that AEW will not take this stacked NXT card lightly and will likely announce a bonkers dynamite lineup for next week's broadcast. I mean the last time they went head-to-head -head with WWE they announced friggin Minoru Suzuki versus Brian Danielson and that match ruled. It's why I'll never quite understand the tribalism portion of wrestling fans. It's totally fair to have a show that you prefer, but to pretend that WWE don't consider AEW competition or vice versa is totally asinine and clearly not true. Tony Khan has said on numerous occasions that WWE is his main competition and WWE on legal record have said that AEW has beaten them in several ratings battles as part of their monopoly court case against MLW. Although they publicly tried to deny it, in that case, they've copped to the idea that all elite wrestling are competition to them. And really, you just have to look at the card for NXT next week to see that. But we are the ones that benefit from all of this. Because NXT is going head to head with Dynamite, John Cena is appearing on NXT. That's insane. Cody Rhodes is appearing on NXT. We're getting Asuka versus Roxanne Perez. That's going to be awesome. This is nothing but great times for wrestling fans. But just as a fun addendum to all of this, and I love to bring this up because it shows how weird and odd the world of pro wrestling is. In that court case with MLW to show that they're not a monopoly, WWE provided evidence that the bunny on AEW did a better quarter hour rating than Brock Lesnar on WWE when they went head to head. Wrestling is mad, but what do you think of this WWE and AEW war and the latest developments in it? Let me know in the comments down below. But it's not just fans who reap the rewards because the war between AEW and WWE has meant that talent have benefited too. More money is being spent on the boys and girls in the locker rooms of both companies and we're seeing talent jump back and forth. In a five-day span, we saw WWE announce the signing of AEW's Jade Cargill, while AEW's Wrestle Dream saw the debut of the former Edge in WWE, Adam Copeland, who ended his 25-year relationship with the company to join the competition. And while we sort of know the direction for Copeland over the next couple of weeks in AEW, there are questions about Cargill in WWE. The company has given her a hard push on both Raw and SmackDown, touting this as a big signing, but there's no clear evidence on whether she'll spend some time in developmental or bypass NXT entirely to head to the main roster. Well, according to PW Insider, Jade Cargill is slated to be at Fastlane this weekend. That's not to say she'll be on the show Show, but Mike Johnson notes that she is tentatively scheduled to also be at Raw and SmackDown next week, with the early word being that she'll debut for the Raw brand at some point. It's worth noting that Cargill was tweeting a lot during this past Monday's Raw broadcast, even asking who her first victim on the red brand will be. Speaking of NXT, and Sean Ross Abba, Fightful Select is reporting that Mustafa Ali, who was released by WWE in the wake of their Endeavor merger, was scheduled to win the North American Championship from Dominic Mysterio at No Mercy. Ali had already been announced for the match before being released and Fightful report the original plan was for him to win the title, adding this is one of the reasons why NXT higher-ups stated to us they were frustrated by the call to cut him. Instead, Trick Williams was put into the Mysterio match, which he won, but dropped the title back to Mysterio on last night's NXT. According to Fightful Selects, the best $51 in the business, the plan was for Ali to cost Dragon Lee his North American Championship match against Mysterio on Raw, which would have led to a triple threat at No Mercy, which Ali would have won. There's no word on whether Ali would have dropped the belt back to Mysterio like Trick Williams did, but Fightful Select report that Shawn Michaels, Ali, and NXT Creative had plans for Ali on the brand into March of 2024. But now it's time for my NXT one minute one take. Crikey, next week's gonna be a doozy. Maybe we'll just do a full review, I don't know. Uh, let me get my clock sorted. Timer, one minute on the clock. Right, let's get you ready. Let me get you into the right place and stop you there. Okay, <laughs> Xavier Woods believes in you. Terry believes in you and I reckon that British wrestling legend Kendo Nagasaki believes in you. Come on, you can do this. 
Three, two, one, let's go. Becky Lynch set up her Halloween Havoc title defense against Lyra Valkyria, but was interrupted by Indy Hartwell and Roxanne Perez, who got booed by the crowd, and Lynch set up a triple threat number one contenders match, which was won by Valkyria. Tegan Knox also showed up. Tyler Bates and Butch beat Gallus with the help of Ridge Holland, and we got a big interrupting game as Ilya Dragunov cut a promo, but was interrupted by Trick Williams, who was interrupted by Carmelo Hayes, and then Ilya left, and Dominic Mysterio interrupted both Trick and Mello. Uh, Corbin set himself up as the new challenger for Dragunov. Gigi Dolan beat Blair Davenport. Kiana James announced that Asuka would be on NXT next week. Kalani Jordan beat Izzy Dame in the breakout tournament. Thea Hale and JC Jane beat Electra Lo... Thea Hale and JC Jane beat Electra Lopez and Lola Vice. Hayes announced Cena would be in his corner for next week. And Dom beat Trick Williams to win back the North American Championship with lots of help from Judgment Day. And Heyman revealed he'll be in the corner of Bron Breaker next week. They also announced that Cody Rhodes will be on the show next week. Four, three, two, one. F nailed that, lads. Ba, 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 ba. Hello. Oh, hello. I'm doing the news. So you are. Oh, never mind. I thought it was Whitney that was here to set, set up the, the TLC stuff. No, so no one's going to come to help. Nope, no one's been here yet. Cool. Oh, you still going? Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm still recording the news. Okay, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, have a good time. Thanks, mate. <laughs> well, there's our end card. <laughs>